When most people think of the A330neo, this is what they envision. A sleek machine with massive engines, graceful wings, and an iconic face mask. If you've ever gotten up close to one of these birds, you'll know just how elegant they are. But today, I'm going to show you a different side of the Neo. If you watched my last video, you'll know that Airbus has been tinkering with its design to address new market needs. And because of this, they've maintained an active flight test vehicle to help certify all of the changes. Airbus gave me exclusive access to this aircraft, so I could take you behind the scenes and show you what's actually new on the Neo. And frankly, I was surprised by just how many changes have been made. So tag along and let's explore this incredible bird together. We're here in front of uh, the very first A330 NEO ever built. Would you mind introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about this aircraft? Absolutely. So I'm Rodrigo Lezama. I'm with the Whitebody Marketing Team. And as you said, it's the first A330 NEO that we built. And this is one of three flight test aircraft that were part of the flight test campaign to certify the 330 NEO. The 330 NEO is built on the heritage of the 330 CO. But obviously, to reinvent a classic, you can't just go light on the changes, right? And we really needed to bring the aircraft to a different level of sustainability, fuel efficiency, passenger comfort, and that's what we did with the 330 NEO. When a lot of people think about NEO, it's in the name, right? New engine option. Right. They think about the engine, and Correct, that's like yes. the big kind of marquee change over the CO, but there are a lot of other subtle changes that have been brought to this aircraft in particular. Could you give us some highlights before we get into the specifics? Absolutely, so as you said, the engine is one big pillar of what makes the 330 NEO 330neo. The other three pillars, I would say, is one, the airspace cabin, the second is the aerodynamics, and then the other part is the systems. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the aerodynamics first, sure. okay? Brand new wing, mm -hmm. it's a 64 meter wingspan design, which means four meters more than the CEO. With the higher span and the redesign that we did, we managed to get a higher aspect ratio. 64 meters, that's about the same length as the 350's wing too, right? The 350 wingspan is 64.75 meters, so yeah, it's almost, it's almost as big, yeah. yeah. But maybe unlike the A350, this is still a primarily aluminum wing. It is an aluminum wing, yes. However, we incorporated the use of advanced materials mm -hmm. to make the wing more efficient. So for example, the upper belly fairing is now a composite part, and it's been redesigned as well. Hmm. The rib, number one of the center wing box, which is the part that helps you basically hold the wing to the fuselage, has been redesigned as well with advanced materials to provide more stiffness. You have the sharklet, as we call it, which is inspired from the A350 design. And it's made of composite as well. So whenever we could, we really look at the, at the structure and said, can we optimize it? Can we make it lighter? Can we add more advanced materials? And that's what we did. The Sharklet, aside from maybe the gigantic engine, it's probably the plane's most defining feature. Yes. And it's all composite, right? Correct. So when you talk about that wing extension, the wing is getting longer, the aspect ratio is improving, but it's not adding a ton of extra weight. And really, as we were saying before, I mean, that gives it a 64 meter wingspan, which is huge. Mm -hmm. And that improves what we're discussing. Take of performance, fuel efficiency, and it really adds on to the overall uh, improvement of the NEO. Again, I think when people think of the A330neo, they think of the engine, they think of the Sharklet. While it is maybe the most defining feature, it's just one component of this like entirely redesigned okay. wing. It's interesting because the, the 330 and the 340 were designed kind of in conjunction, and as a result, there were some concessions that had to be made essentially with the wing to make sure it was suitable for both aircraft. This new wing has been kind of restructured specifically for this aircraft and re-optimized for it. Correct. Yes. We were constrained by the fact that it was a wing for two different airplanes. Yep. Now it's a wing that's only for the 330neo. So the 340 being a quad engine aircraft mm -hmm. needed dual set of pylons on each side, of yep. course. Um, on the 330neo is not the case. So we removed some provisions, the flap tracks that were also redesigned to allow for better fuel efficiency, reduced drag and whatnot. Of course, just as important as the wing is what's attached to it. And with that giant turbofan staring us right in the face, we couldn't ignore it for long. 
But before we talk about this engine, I have to give a huge shout out to my supporters on Patreon. Because of your support, I can now do YouTube full time. This gives me the freedom to go on last second adventures like this one and bring you exclusive content from the aviation world. Your support has helped me to do some really cool things. For instance, I attended the 747 final delivery earlier this year, and I'll be visiting the Paris Air Show this June. Neither of those things would have been possible without your support. So if you value my work, I recommend you join my Patreon community. When you do so, you'll get access to patrons-only videos, early access to my regular videos, an invite to my Discord, and your name in the outro. And if you aren't able to contribute, but want to support me anyways, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. You'd be surprised how big of a difference it makes. Thanks again to my patrons for your continued support, and without further ado, let's get back into it and check out these massive engines. This is a Trent 7000. That's correct, Kobe. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about what makes this thing special? First and foremost is that it was specifically designed to power a 330neo. So everything around it was optimized to bring the most fuel efficiency you can. This engine has a fan of 112 inches, which is 15% larger than the previous uh, engine uh, on the CM, the Trent 700. If you think about the Trent lineup, you have the 1000, then you have the XWB, then you have the 7000. So this is, while it's maybe the same, size in general same thrust output of a Trent 1000 it's almost like a two generation buff it's architecture from from the Trent 1000 mm -hmm. but it's not a Trent 1000 at all there are technologies on the Trent XWB engine which powers the 350 that then we decided to bring into a Trent 7000 yeah such as the compressor the compressor on the 7000 has a pressure ratio of 50 to 1 wow. which is huge we also incorporated blisks on the compressor section. So before you used to have the disc and the blades yep. and you would mechanically assemble them. Now you have one piece that is the disc with all the blades. Yep. What does it give you? Well, lightweight. What it also gives you is on a SFC, a specific fuel consumption, it gives you 11% fuel burn reduction at the aircraft level, yeah. which combined with the other things and the aerodynamics and the cabin, ultimately make the 330 Neo 14% better in terms of fuel per seat compared to this year. Another uh, interesting thing on, on the engine is the, uh, you see the air inlet here. It's a, it's a composite piece. It's an Airbus uh, pattern design that we also brought from the 350 mm -hmm. and it's just one piece. It's what we call the zero splice design where basically it's just one piece. Yeah. And that really helps to smooth the flow that is going into the fan. Do you want to talk about the rear end? Of... Well, the pylon, I mean, the pylon was the pylon? steel in the 330CO, it is now titanium. Oh, okay. Titanium is, is it a lighter material than That's what was- steel, yes. Than the steel that was being used and is more robust, I'm assuming. And so this is more of that implementation of new materials, keeping the heritage of the CO, right? right. And maintaining commonality, but where it makes sense, Exactly. incorporating newer, lighter, more robust materials. That's absolutely correct, yes. Gotcha. But while the engine is chock full of new hardware, equally as important is its software. The other interesting thing, you know, on the, on the Trent 7000, it's not just the efficiency that you get for, uh, from the hardware, yeah. but it's also, you know, what can you draw in terms of technology? And you can see here the FADEC. It stands for actually Full Authority Digital Engine Controller. Hmm. So it's basically the, the computer that controls everything on the engine. To the drop of fuel that you will burn, it's controlled by the FADEC. Do you, do you guys leverage AI or machine learning or anything to like predict performance and stuff like that? When it comes to software that goes on board an aircraft, mm -hmm. there are different categories and criticalities of software yeah. that you need. When it comes to the FADEC, is what we call criticality A or level A. It's got to be software that's extremely proofed, that is absolutely yeah. safe. And certain types of uh, you know, logics typically are harder to certify when it comes yeah. to a piece of equipment like the FADEC. Sure. However, when it comes to monitoring, then you can look into different things, yeah. you know, like uh, different techniques for prognostics. And that's where it becomes really interesting what you can do with all that big data. How do you use it to facilitate your operations, to make sure that if you need a part that needs to be replaced, that you know about it the minute you park at the gate and yeah. you don't lose any time and you don't sit the aircraft or leave it on the ground without making money for you. Yeah. 
Continuing our journey from tip to tail, here is the giant tail. And while it may look the same as previous A330s, that's actually not the case. The Empedas section is another section where we uh, took the opportunity to look into, okay, can we use more advanced materials? So yeah. we incorporated new composites on the different parts and sections of the empennage, you know, overall, like the tail, the horizontal stabilizer. Sure. So that's another area where you can't tell from afar, but it is there. And this is how it is contributing to the, to the efficiency. So those are the big external changes made to the NEO. But of course, the thing that most passengers will notice is what's inside. And the NEO's cabin is a significant upgrade over the CO, both for passengers and for airlines. So as you walk in, Kobe, hopefully you're getting a familiar feeling. It feels like an A350 in here. The bins are big, the lighting is nice. I would imagine that from Airbus's perspective, you want to feel like you're on an Airbus. It's an airspace cabin, as we were saying, and it is the same DNA that you find all across our cabins now. Mm -hmm. So as an airline, if you were to get, you know, a 321 XLR, and then you also have a wide body fleet, 330 Neo, 350, you as a passenger may experience, say, uh, a first flight with a single aisle to one of the hubs, mm -hmm. and then maybe you jump on a long haul with one of the white bodies and you feel a familiar feeling. The colors, the branding, everything is customizable. So you as an airline can provide this brand consistency yeah. all across the fleet. It also brings additional revenue opportunities because mm -hmm. with the airspace cabin and the enablers that we have, the new labs, the different configurations, you can now add more seats. Yeah. And that obviously contributes to the revenue without sacrificing any passenger comfort, right? Mm -hmm. So here on the 330neo, things that the airspace cabin brings compared to the CO. The first most radical thing probably that you see is, you know, the colors. And mm -hmm. that comes with the mood lighting, just like on the 350, 16 million plus uh, colors for all sorts of combination to really customize. The other big element that you can you can check out here on the on the A330 Neo airspace cabin are the bins. Mm -hmm. Much, much larger bins, 65% larger bins and you can see clearly here how they fit the backs the redesigned labs galley area as you can see you know there's a lot of uh, space for crews to work with which again oh, that's help you with the space optimization mm -hmm. helping you maximize the efficiency on the cabin space that you have so that about does it from the new engine to the wing to the cabin and every minute detail in between it's clear that the A330 has undergone a transformation. But before I left, I had to ask Rodrigo how I could actually fly on one of these aircraft myself. Well, the 330neo today is flying with 21 operators. Mm -hmm. Back home for you, Delta yeah. is uh, one Delta's of our big, big customers. One. We're very proud of that. You also have TAP Portugal, which was our launch customer. Last month, we delivered the first one to uh, Virgin Atlantic mm -hmm. with a fantastic cabin. You have a lounge, you have a rest social area. It's really, really amazing. You have uh, other airlines like Cebu Pacific, who recently, this year, took delivery of the 330neo with a certified max capacity of 460 seats. It just goes to tell you that the 330neo really fits all business models, and we're very proud of that. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Rodrigo. Yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure. My pleasure. So, there you have it. That's what's new on the A330neo. Now, in last week's video, I mentioned that I designed this sweatshirt myself. They aren't for sale, but I did promise I'd give a few away. Well, a ton of people seemed to like the design and wanted to get their hands on one. So I'm going to give away a few more. Just leave a comment telling me what you learned about the Neo, in addition to your shirt size, and I'll pick a few more winners. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram, as I'll be announcing the winners over there. And if you haven't seen last week's video yet, I highly recommend you check it out. It's a direct compliment to this one, and breaks down why the Neo is poised for a sales comeback. I'll be sure to leave a link to it in the description. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you like what I do and want to help the channel grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.